Like, share, subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. Number 40, we're dealing with a logarithm problem. Um, and really it's like three logarithm problems in one. It says, which of the following must be true? And this is really all about understanding how logarithms work, understanding the properties of logarithms. Um, so we'll start with number one. Uh, it says log base three of three to the t equals t. Is that true or not? Well, whenever, um, yeah, so logarithms are just exponents. And so if, if I'm asking you to evaluate, like, what is log base 3 of 3 to the t? What I'm really asking you to evaluate here is what exponent do I need to raise this base to to make it equal this power? Okay, so 3, so if this, if we're trying to answer, like, what does this equal? 3 to the what power, okay, so that's this base is to what power equals this, I'm sorry, to this exponent equals this power. And so we can see that, okay, 3 to what power equals 3 to the t, and now it's a little bit more obvious that t has to be whatever that is. So yeah, this does equal t, uh, so this one checks out. This one is true, so we can eliminate 2 only. Um, we can eliminate 2 and 3 only because we know that 1 is legit. Okay, part 2 says the natural log of 10 to the power of 4.3 is equal to 4.3 times natural log of 10. Yeah, that's also true. We've got a, uh, what's called a, and you can look this up if you want a little bit more detail, but it's kept called the power property. Um, and this is, there's a couple different power properties out there, but this is with regards to um, or with respect to logarithms. Uh, but basically what it says is that if you have a log and you can have any base, in this case we're dealing with the natural log, so I'll just stick with that. The natural log of any power, we can rewrite that as whatever that exponent is, as long as it's on um, whatever the argument is here, uh, we can rewrite that as, an exp uh, as a coefficient. So this is always going to be true. And, we, and you can see letter 2 here is really just a direct application of that property. So as long as you know that property, you should be able to get that one right. So 2 is correct, okay, or it's true. Um, so we can eliminate A here, and now it's just a matter of narrowing it down to, to 3. It, you know, I like to cross these out, although that's not really going to, it's not going to shorten the amount of work we have to do because we still have to check all three. Um, but it does kind of help you kind of narrow down, you know, like if you can't decide if three is right at this point, then at least you have a coin flip and you have a 50% shot of getting it right rather than a 20% shot. So anyway, this last one is really just, it's, so it's, this is going to use the power property, but it's also going to use the product property. So let me show you what the product property is. And again, these uh, logarithm properties, um, these uh, logarithm properties, uh, what's going on here? Sorry, these, uh, these logarithm properties work for logarithms of any base. Um, so, you know, this, the first one had a base 3. This is a base 3 logarithm. Um, when you see natural log, that's actually has a base of Euler's number. Okay, we write it as E. You do a little Googling on Euler's number if you want to know more about that. And then this one is, is a base 10. Now what's kind of interesting here is they actually write the 10 here. That's pretty unconventional. Usually when you have base 10, you just don't write a base. It's pretty common to just see like log of whatever. In fact, if you look at your calculator, you'll see you have a log button. And it'll just say log won't, won't actually have a base on it. Um, there actually is an implied base here, and the base is 10. So usually you don't see that 10. I find it kind of curious that they wrote the 10 here. That's You don't usually see it like that. So on the test, I don't know if this is just, you know, some amateur typing out these questions, um, but th this is not very conventional. But this it, it's fine. It's not necessarily wrong to write it. It'd be like if you were to write, like, 1x instead of x. You don't really need the 1 there. Um, it's not You typically don't write it, but it's not necessarily wrong if you do write it. Okay, so uh, anyway, the product property here 
states that if you have log, and again, this could be any base, so I'm just going to use base 10 as the example here because that's what this is, and you have a product inside that logarithm, you can split up those factors so that each is inside their own logarithm. You do that using addition. Okay, we're not really going to go through the proofs of these. Again, you can Google those on other videos if you want like a more in-depth explanation why this is true. But this is the property we're going to use to verify number three. Um, and so we can see if we have, I'm not even going to type the 10 just because that is not really, it's not really how you write the logarithms typically, the common log. Um, so just know that this is 4 base 10. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is say, okay, so I've got log of x times y to the n. So I'm going to use um, the product property to first split this up. Okay, so I'm going to say that this is log of x plus log of y to the n. And then I'm going to use the power property to bring this exponent down to be a coefficient of this logarithm. Now, really, the power, the power property, which I don't think is super obvious at first glance, is, uh, it's, um, is really just an extension of the product property. You know, like I said, if you want to look at the proof, you can go find it in other places. But, uh, but it's rooted in the fact that the pro product property works. Okay, in fact, it is really just a specific case of the product property. Um, but anyway, so we get log x plus n log y, which is what we have over here. So that's going to be true to this whole for all positive numbers, x and y. Um, you know, you don't really need this. This is, I mean, I guess technically you do, but it's really just more of a detail there that they're, they're putting there to be technically accurate. Um, you know, if usually you just assume that the, that the do domain, like you're only going to have values that are valid for the domain anyway. Um, so this is typically just sort of an implied assumption, but, uh, but they spelled it out here for you. I guess maybe just to kind of confuse you a little bit, but you don't really need to pay that piece of the statement much attention here. Um, so anyway, yeah, all three of these are going to be true. So our answer here is going to be choice E, and that is it for number 40. Uh, thanks for watching, and y'all have a great day.